Over the years since its release in October of 2010, Instagram has continued to get more and more complex in the different ways that you can browse and create content on the app. This leaves a lot of content creators, especially beginners, confused about where to start and where to post what types of content, when and why. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the ultimate guide to the five different types of posts on Instagram and how each of them have their own advantages and disadvantages and ways that they can help you grow. Each of these different types of posts fits into your content strategy in a different way. So today I'm gonna to clarify that for you so that after this video, you can create a varied content calendar with different types of posts that are all gonna to contribute to your growth on Instagram. Before we get into it, I wanna say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, URL Genius. More on that later in the video. So as I said in the intro, there are five different types of posts on Instagram. And just in case you're not sure what those are, they are feed posts, story posts, IGTV, reels, and live streams. And all of these different types of content, different places to post your content can contribute to your growth in different ways. So let's get started by talking about feed posts. Feed posts are the oldest form of content on the app. Obviously this is where Instagram started out with just a feed of little squares, but it has grown to include a lot more than that. So you can either post a static image, you can post a carousel of up to 10 different images or videos, or you can post just a video up to a minute long. In terms of like the dimensions or like aspect ratios of these, they can be squares. They can actually be horizontal, like 16 by nine, or they can be up to four by five or like eight by 10 aspect ratio. That's the most vertical that you can get on the Instagram feed. And in general, it's recommended when you're creating content for this context to go for either square or that four by five aspect ratio because um, you're gonna take up the most screen real estate and it's gonna be easier to get noticed. In terms of the purpose of feed content in your overall strategy, this is the backbone of your Instagram strategy. This is like your cornerstone content where you're gonna provide the most value, connect with your audience, and also give yourself a chance to be seen by potentially new followers, people who haven't seen your content yet. It's important because it sets up your profile as like a value proposition to newcomers who show up on your page and are deciding whether or not to follow you. If you have some really great stuff in your feed, then people are gonna be more likely to click the follow button, whereas they can't necessarily see all of your stories. They can see your highlights, they can see your current stories, but that's not gonna be necessarily what convinces people to follow. So you gotta make sure you have feed content, good stuff. <laughs> Overall, the purpose of this type of content is to, at the same time, connect with your current audience, but also through hashtags, through the explore page, connect with people who you haven't met yet that might actually be convinced to follow you. So this is kind of like a dual approach. And really it's important to remember, this is where you're gonna be providing the most value. This is where you're gonna create carousel graphics that provide a ton of information and where you're gonna write captions that really are vulnerable and share yourself with your followers. Plus, this is a great place to work off of to create your other content. So you can create story content or lives based on that cornerstone content that you're posting in your feed. So try to think about your Instagram feed as like your blog or almost like a magazine of your brand. And the other types of content that we're gonna talk about are sort of supplementary to this feed content. When it comes to how often to post, when me and my team work with our clients, we create 20 posts a month for Instagram. So that means about once per weekday, it kind of depends on how many weeks are in the month. So I would recommend if you can, posting like Monday through Friday, but it depends on when your audience is live, but that's about how often is like the ideal for posting to your Instagram feed. All right, so that is the feed content. Now let's talk about Reels. Reels are a relatively new form of content on Instagram. And as I'm sure we're all familiar by now, it's basically, it's TikToks. It's just short form vertical videos that really rely a lot on um, audio trends or music trends. And they are hugely popular and a really, really great way to find new followers on Instagram. In terms of where this content shows up, it can appear in the main Instagram feed if the creator selects show in feed when they're creating the reel, but mostly reels show up in the Reels Explore page. The huge, huge benefit to this is that you are seeing content not just from people that you follow in your Reels Explore page, but from creators that the Instagram algorithm has determined you might be interested in. 
This means for creators, it is a huge opportunity to grow your audience organically. I was able to grow like 4,000 new followers in 2021 so far by using Reels, especially when I was posting more actively in January and February. So it's a really, really great way to establish those new connections. So it's important to know when you're creating Reels that you're making this content, not necessarily for people who already know you, but for people that you might not be acquainted with yet. So it's good to make it sort of beginner level introduction to your brand and also make sure that the Reels you're making are really relevant to the other content that you wanna be posting because you might have a reel go viral and then people will find you from that reel and they'll expect more content of that type. So it's important to keep your reels on brand, consistent with what you're doing elsewhere on your page and that will really help you to find new followers that are interested in what you're doing. So overall, the purpose of Reels right now really is to find new followers. Your existing followers will also see your Reels and enjoy them, but Reels are just huge right now when it comes to growth. So in terms of frequency of posting, what I would recommend is really just posting Reels like as often as possible. So before when I was talking about that 20 posts a month that we create for our clients, that actually includes Reels. And for some of our clients, that might mean up to half of their posts are real. So that would be like 10 a month and then like 10 regular feed posts a month. It all depends on the type of content that aligns with your brand and what you want to make, but it's definitely a good thing to aim towards to put some of the ideas that you had for feed posts and think about how you can shift those into a context that makes sense for reels. It's really going to help your growth. The third type of post on Instagram is of course stories. Stories is a super popular part of the app and for a lot of users, it's where they actually spend most of their time. Now, Reels might be eating into that a little bit because Reels is also very popular, but for a lot of people, you open up the app and you immediately start tapping through stories. Now, this doesn't mean that feed content isn't important because like I was saying before, if people find your profile, let's say through a reel, they're gonna check out your feed before they decide to follow you. So you wanna make sure that your feed is looking good because like I was saying before, your stories, they're there for 24 hours and a lot of people don't necessarily tap through highlights. So that's all to say, you gotta get your feed looking right, you get your reels trending so people find your profile and then you use your stories to connect with them on a day-to-day -day basis and make sure that you're staying front of mind so that your followers don't forget about you. Now this content doesn't have to be super on brand, it's temporary, right? So it's a really great opportunity to show a little bit of insight to your life, do a little bit behind the scenes, show that personality a bit more. So for me, you know, that might mean talking about Outlander or how I've recently become obsessed with Hosier or the coffee that I'm making this afternoon. It doesn't have to be about what your niche is. And in terms of frequency, I recommend going on stories daily if you can. Now. That's not always possible and I want to acknowledge the fact that, you know, mental health, it comes in waves and sometimes we feel more capable of doing this kind of thing. Sometimes we feel less and that's me just being honest that I haven't been super there on my stories for several weeks now, but you know, such is life. You just got to do your best. Daily is ideal, but you know, we're not always living in the ideal situation. We are certainly not living in an ideal situation right now. So you just gotta do your best, um, but definitely don't feel like you can't post daily. Like if you have the energy for it, go for it. And you can post like three to even up to 10 times a day on your stories. And also remember to use those stickers that allow you to engage with your audience, like polls, question boxes, all that kind of fun stuff. It'll help um, your followers get to know you more and feel more like they can reach out and connect with you through DMs as well. Speaking of stories, I actually wanna tell you about my favorite hack for linking content within my story. So after you have 10K followers, you can do a swipe up link in your stories, or if you actually have less than 10K, there's still a way that you can kind of do a, a swipe up hack with IGTV. So I will link my video up here about that, but the point is I wanna tell you about URL Genius, which is an awesome online software for deep linking to your content through apps like Instagram. Also, make sure you stay tuned until after the ad break. It's just gonna be a few seconds here and then we're gonna talk about lives and IGTV and how important they are to your strategy. So once again, thanks to URL Genius for sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of them before, URL Genius is an online application that lets you deep link to your content through apps like Instagram. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of deep linking, here is kind of a practical example of how this works and why I love it so much. 
So for example, if you were trying to link to a YouTube video, for instance, in your Instagram stories, if I were to just take the link from YouTube and put it in that little swipe up section on my stories, when my followers swipe up on that story, it is gonna open my YouTube video in a web browser inside Instagram. Now, this is fine, but it's not ideal because it means that my subscriber isn't gonna be logged into their account. So it'll be kind of this default version of YouTube where they would be prompted to log in if they wanted to comment or like, and you know nobody's gonna bother typing in their username and password to do that. <laughs> and so what this means is it leads to lower engagement. If you just link directly to your YouTube video and it opens up in the web browser inside Instagram, people aren't gonna like or comment or they're not gonna subscribe if they haven't subscribed yet. So what URL Genius does through deep linking it is it allows you to link to your YouTube video in a way that is actually gonna tell Instagram to open up the YouTube app for your followers, which means when they swipe up, It'll open up in YouTube, which is gonna make it so much easier for them to like, comment, and subscribe. And it'll just generally increase the engagement and the watch time on your videos because people are more likely to actually watch the entire video in YouTube because it's just a much better user experience than that web browser inside Instagram. And this works for so much more than just YouTube. You can link to your Amazon affiliate storefront and it will actually open up the Amazon app. And you can actually link to other apps like TikTok or Spotify, or even if you're within TikTok, you can link to Instagram in a way that will open up the Instagram app. So really deep linking just makes everything so much a smoother experience for your followers and therefore increases your conversion rates and your engagement rates on your other content or your things that you're trying to sell like affiliate links for instance. Overall, URL Genius is just an awesome tool for content creators or for online marketers for making sure that your followers or your viewers end up at the place where you're actually trying to link them to with the best user experience possible. So if you wanna try out URL Genius for yourself, make sure you check out the link in my description. Trust me, it is a super great tool and I've been using it for a couple of years now and I love it. All right, on to IGTV as promised. How does IGTV fit into your Instagram content strategy? So as you might be familiar, IGTV was introduced a couple years ago and basically it's a tool within Instagram that allows you to upload videos that are up to like 15 minutes or an hour long, depending on where you upload them. That's a hot tip. If you upload on mobile, you'll only be able to upload 15 minutes of content, but if you upload it on desktop, you can do up to an hour anyway. Here's the thing about IGTV. In my opinion, it's a way to host high value, longer form videos that obviously you wouldn't be able to post in your feed or stories or reels, but it's not exactly the kind of content that is necessarily going to get you new followers. It's more so for connecting with your existing audience, providing that extra value and that extra connection. So in terms of how frequently you wanna post these longer videos, I would say anywhere from like one to two times a month is good to aim for. The cool thing about this is actually if you plan an IGTV video, which is essentially like a YouTube video, like, you know, sitting down, talking to your audience, probably you'll be able to take snippets out of that and repurpose it for reels, feed content, story content, that kind of thing, because it's like this really long piece of content, like a YouTube video or a podcast. So it can kind of become this cornerstone piece of content for you that you can then repurpose into these other places on the app. But I'll just be honest, it's not the kind of thing that is going to like blow up on the explore page or like really generate a ton of new followers for you. And so, you know, depending on what you're aiming for with your content strategy right now, if growth is really important to you, then maybe doing IGTV a little less often and focusing a bit more on something like reels would make sense for you. And finally, live streams, another very important and often ignored or I don't know, less talked about form of content on Instagram. Lives, again, are not necessarily going to get you new followers unless you do collaborative lives, which we'll talk about in a second. But in general, lives are a really great way to connect with your existing audience in real time, answer questions, and really build that like, know, and trust factor. In terms of collaborative lives, recently Instagram has allowed creators to do live streams with up to three other people. So you can have a live stream with four people on it, which is really cool. It means that you can kind of collaborate with other creators and therefore exchange audiences. So this might be a way that lives can actually help you grow. And this is because if I do a live stream with another person, we will both send out notifications then automatically to our followers. We'll show up in like that story feed where it shows um, current live streams. And that will be shown to both of our audiences, which means 
whoever I'm collaborating with, their audience who might not know me yet will then see me on the live stream. They might end up following me and vice versa. So similar to YouTube collabs or podcasts, this can be a really great way to network with other creators in your niche and kind of exchange Instagram audiences. Overall though, I think lives are just a really great way to connect with your people and kind of build that relationship in a way that feels so much more real because it is synchronous. And those are the five different forms of content on Instagram. I hope this cleared some things up for you and maybe gave you some ideas for where you can start with building out your own content strategy. If you wanna see some more tutorials on how to make reels, for instance, if that's something that's new for you, I've got a bunch of videos on it that I've posted recently, so make sure you go check those out. Also, make sure you check out URL Genius, linked in the description. And as always, I hope that you're having adventures and following your dreams, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.